So today I'm going to work on replacing the lock here on this undercover tonneau cover on this F-150. It got stuck so it would open and close like this, but I couldn't lift it up so the lock mechanism was stuck. And I called uh, undercover and they were able to get me a replacement lock. So it's a lock that fits the factory key. So once the key goes in for the first time, it sets the lock to that key, and then you can continue to use your factory key, so you don't need any other keys. But I'm just gonna go through the process. I did get the new lock, no directions came with it, so we're just gonna have to figure it out. So let me get going. All right, so here's the new lock that came with it. Um, slightly different now, it says forward on the cover, which is kind of cool. But um, so we got the lock, and we got this nut and we got this screw and what you're going to need is a pair of uh, retaining ring pliers to be able to get that retaining ring off the easiest way anyway um, but just to show you what happened on my old lock was that this mechanism here this little pin ended up getting stuck in the in the uh i guess it's in the lock position so there's a little spring behind it and you can if you push on it you can feel it go in and out so um, that got stuck in the in the down position so the spring wasn't working anymore and the only way for me to open it was to actually uh, hit it with a, a rubber mallet and luckily because everything was closed and locked luckily I was able to uh, have that pin fall out so um so here's the pin from the old one that's still in there and the spring that was behind it so those are the pieces that fell out so now the lock the locking mechanism actually that's on there now turns it opens and closes but it just doesn't lock so i want to be able to lock it so that's why i'm really replacing it so i think the first thing i want to do is take the retaining ring off of the lock uh, in the assembly so on so I'll move it so there's the there's the retaining ring so I think if I go ahead and take the retaining ring off I might be able to then have enough play that I can move this back and unhook that and then that way this this piece here could be pulled away from the main part of the lock. And then the other thing on here is this pretty large uh, flat nut that's connected there. So you'll have to get like channel locks or if you have a big open-ended crescent wrench, you could get that on there too. But um, I'm gonna first start with the retaining ring. All right, so I figured out step one, which is to take this little plastic piece off. So it's just held clipped on around this piece so um, you pull it you pull it away and that part comes out and then you can lift up on the silver piece here and then it'll it'll come right out and the plastic piece will come off so just remember that it goes back through that hole and as you can and as you can see there's that that goes around that metal rod so that's how that's connected so now with that out of the way I can move this off of I should be able to move this off of the metal rod too which I think I need two hands. Um, 
and then I'll get to removing the retaining. Wall. All right, so I took this piece out of here, out of here, just hang it right there for now. So I think the only way for me to get this black tube part off is actually to, so I started loosening this big nut here. I guess I'm just gonna have to loosen that up and then pull out the lock assembly. My, I think there's a screw all the way at the end that's holding this plastic piece to the lock. So I'm guessing that because on the new lock, if I look at the end, there's threads and it looks like something screws into there. So I think I have to pull the whole thing out before I can actually separate it and then pull the retaining ring off. Uh, so let me go ahead and pull the whole thing out. All right, so I loosened up the nut and pulled the nut down. That's out of the way. There is a wing nut over here on the other side. So if I end up taking this out, I've got to, it actually pulls the whole handle out too. So we'll remove the wing nut and then it looks like there's a backing plate here too. Oh. So I'll, oh, no, no, hey, dummy. Um, so we'll go ahead and pull the, pull the wing nut off, take the backing plate off, and then should be able to then slide the whole handle assembly off. All right, so here you can see now the whole assembly is coming out. Um, and uh, like I thought, there is a Phillips head screw, dry, screw in there that's gonna have to be removed and that way that plastic tube can come off and then I'll start uh, seeing what else has to be done to take the old lock off of the handle. All right, so I went ahead and took the uh, loosened up the Phillips head, so now um, this should come out. Actually, I gotta loosen it up a little bit more. But uh, anyway, you see that uh, that's gonna go ahead and uh, come right off of there. And then I'm gonna have to figure out if this just slides right out of the handle, which I'm assuming maybe it does. We'll have to see how the lock actually comes out of there, but uh, we'll get to that one too. All right, so now that I got the plastic tube part off, um, it does, the lock mechanism does come out. Um, it was a little tight in there, so I just gave it a couple taps on the back of the bed and uh, it went ahead and came right out. So there's the old one. So now I'm going to go ahead and start assembling the new one back into the handle. I guess you don't need to mess around with this retaining clip at all, which is good. So, uh, so you don't need um, the retaining clip pliers. So we'll just reverse the install. Uh, give me the new lock here. Slide it on into here. Now this one doesn't have the grooves like this one. This one had a flat and a groove. And this one's got no groove. But it does have a flat, so um, I'm gonna have to see how that goes together. Maybe for other applications, it's a little bit different, but in this case, it looks like it just goes right in. And I've got to make sure, however, this gets oriented is correct. So, um, 
gonna open like that. Oh, okay, so once it's in, it does have something in there retaining it from spinning, which is good. But I just have to make sure I put it in the proper way so it's not upside down or anything like that. All right, so let me take a look at that. All right, so I'm gonna take a guess here that this is the right side up and it opens, swings to the right, and then I'm gonna, right now it's locked so it won't turn left or right. Now this one is closed right now, and when this one opened, it flips up. So I think if this opens and flips up, that you would want to see the forward emblem. Not upside down, but in the correct direction. So I'm assuming that's correct. We'll see. I might have to uh, pop it out and redo it if it's wrong, but um, I'm gonna go with that. All right, so I got this plastic piece screwed on. Now again, without directions, you have no idea where this is supposed to actually be. So um, I just quickly put it on the old one just to take a look. So when the old one was in the, clo in the open position, this piece was to the right side. And then when I closed the old one, that piece swings to the left. So I'm assuming this is locked and closed so that this little clevis over here that connects to the uh, connects to the metal locking mechanism pieces um, that connect to the rod. I'm assuming that in the closed position that needs to point to the left. So again, might be something that I'm going to have to redo, but that's what I'm going with. All right, so there is an O-ring that came with the kit, um, and I think it goes on this side. It makes sense to me that it would be on the outside because it's going to squeeze it up when you go ahead and put the nut on and then keep any water uh, from getting in between and then maybe running down and getting into the locking mechanism and the other reason is because this locking nut that goes on here and tightens it up has these teeth on it these little teeth sticking up so if i put the o-ring on this side then those teeth will just tear it up as you try to tighten it so i'm going to go with it goes on the outside and uh, and then we'll see how that fits up once I go ahead and get this on and this back uh, into the cover. All right, so I got this back in here, just kind of loosely in here. I haven't really tightened anything down too much, just in case I have to move things around. I did um, go ahead and get this piece back inside this plastic tube um, and hooked it on here. Now, if you want to move this around, you can. That's, uh, that'll give you, and you can move this back and forth a, a little bit, which will give you some room to hook this on. Uh, next thing is to um, get this piece right here. It's going to go in that hole, but don't forget, you've got this little plastic thing to put on too so this is gonna go around that around the metal rod and then this goes inside that hole but also there's a little clip that it goes that gets put on the side so um, let me get this to that side, and then I think with two hands I should be able to just clip this on and then get this, uh, this rod into the, uh, into the hole there. So let me give it a shot. All right, just want to show this again. So the, uh, the best way to do it is actually you got to get it, um, you gotta get the plastic piece on the black rod here, 
and then go ahead and drop the silver rod into the hole and then once you do that you can just slide that over and it clicks into place so uh, so that's how that should look and now I think I can put the key in and then see if it locks and unlocks okay and then if it does then I'll tighten everything down all right so I got it in I went ahead and put the key in so now the key works with it but you can see I was wrong on the direction so it wants to turn to the to the right so now I have to take this out flip it over so that way it'll turn to the turn to the left like it should and then the Ford logo will be in the correct orientation when the thing is unlocked all right so after looking at this a little bit harder with the Ford logo up I want the clevis to the top left so that way when it goes to move down and the Ford logo is horizontal it'll be in the right position all right so after a little bit of a pain um, that was it that was the correct direction so right now it is locked and then right now it is unlocked so um, so what was giving me a little bit of trouble is I didn't have this silver piece in the right spot I actually had it um, over here where the plastic was instead of over here so I fixed that now it actually um, locks and unlocks the right way before it was binding up when I would turn it to the unlock position but now it's not binding up so um, just try to remember or look back at this video and you can see how this piece goes back in and back together uh, because that was uh, that was causing me some pain but now it's all set so I can go ahead and tighten this down I can uh, tighten this down and then we'll be good all right, so here it is on the outside right now it's in the unlocked position go ahead and lock it and the Ford logo is horizontal when it's uh, when it's in the lock position, which I kind of like. Um, and then unlock, just turn it, and the Ford logo is now vertical. So, uh, so all done. I'll get this one out there, and hopefully it helps. Because again, you don't get any instructions, so it could be frustrating to figure out.